what he's doing is recognizing the fact that God knows all things. Mm -hmm. All things about you and I way before we even think about it. Amen. Amen. Right. So let me tell you why I say that. Because think about who woke you up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It wasn't that alarm clock that right. it was God realized that you need to get up at That's a certain right. time. Mm -hmm. right. See, He That's knows right. when to wake you up. Mm -hmm. All right. Does that fact sink into your thought as well? You know, many people sometimes, if they really thought God knew everything about them, that God don't want anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know how we are. I'm too bad. Mm -hmm. God, I'm so bad. I know you don't care about me. But let me want to tell you one thing about God. See, God know when we're going to commit a sin oh, yes. mm -hmm. way before we're committed that sin. That's right. That's right. That's right. Do you realize that? Amen. Mm -hmm. right, before so. you make your first step, he already there oh. waiting on you. Yes. All right. Because see, he's that type of God. He knows it all. Amen. So don't think you're fooling him. Huh. You're not. Amen. Now follow with me as I read verse 2. It says, you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Mm -hmm. David expanded his initial statement that God knows us. Mm -hmm. Even in common ordinary business of living, God still knows what we're doing. Right. God is aware and involved. No movement that we make escapes the attention of God. All right. All right, sir. Even our thoughts do not escape his awareness. Amen. We might try to hide our business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we might express our emotions. We may even lock our mouths here. <laughs> our thoughts, keep our thoughts to ourselves, think we can, I can fool Steve. You know, keeping my thoughts to myself. But let me tell you one thing. You can't fool capital G-O-D. All right. God knows what we feel and think. He is more aware of our motives and passions, our jealousies, our pettiness, our selfishness, and our unselfishness. Even more aware than we are. Amen. Do you know that? Oh, yes. Yeah. If you don't, then listen to what I got to say to you. All right, now. Okay? <laughs> now, follow with me as I read verse 3. It reads, You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. All right. All right. This verse focuses more on God's knowledge than on God's action. He knows it all. Yes, sir. Look what it said. My path. Mm -hmm. My lying down. Mm -hmm. And all my ways. Mm -hmm. yes, In other words, nothing I do is too insignificant for God's attention. Amen. 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 This is true for each of you as well. Amen. Nothing you do is too right. significant right. for God's attention. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to understand that. In order to live in this world that we're living in, got to be careful how we carry ourselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, we got someone always got to watch for eye on us. Yeah. And see, and I try to tell people all the time, you're not going to be perfect. So don't right. just think you'll be perfect. Amen. Because Amen. there's only one I, I know of that walked this earth. Amen. And that was Jesus himself. Amen. The rest of us are just here waiting on our time. So why not do the best that you can while you're waiting on that time? Amen. You know, help somebody else along the way. I like to always put this in because I got a lovely wife. Amen. 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 Nearly almost 30 years of marriage. I must admit, when I see that lady, the light just goes on. <laughs> <laughs> in a room full of people, I hear a voice all over the voices because I can pick the eye. Out. Because that lady excites me. Wow. Mm. <laughs> it feels good to just see that smile. I can pick a smile out of on all other smiles. It doesn't matter how much I feel about my wife, but I got somebody care more about me than I care about my wife. That's good. Right. Right. So why do you get so excited about your spouse and you don't get excited about God? Right. That's what gets me. Right. See, we're putting our priorities in the wrong place. See, we need to concentrate on the wife. My wife can't save my soul. I love her dearly, but she can't save me. See, that's what we got to understand. Your husband can't save you either. Your children can't save you. You put your life into your children. You put it in the wrong place. You need to put it in the only one that can save you. And that's God himself. I just tell you, it's exciting to me to be able to talk about him. See, 
I get goosebumps. All right. You know, they crawl all over me like bugs. And boo. That's why I knew I had to go head on and do this. I, you know, I've been running for years. You know, my mother told me before I, she died that I was going to be up here one day, and I told her she was crazy. You know? But she said, watch. And my, when I told my sister, my sister said, I knew. See, I knew. Because I knew how you was, and I knew what Josephine said to you. That was my mother. She said, she was... No, call it, you know, mothers are wise if we oh, listen to yes. them. Yes. Right. But, you know, yes. we don't understand they have their wisdom that, you know, we need. Okay, now follow with me as I read verse 7. It said, where can I go from thy spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? David's question here is not for persuasion. The answers are obvious. There's no place we can hide from God. Amen. You know that? Amen. He's everywhere. David understand that, that space and time do not constrict God. Right. His presence is not limited to one area. And also must his action follow a linear line as we know it. God is not following us around though like a private investigator. You know that? <laughs> Most of us think that's what he's doing. Rather, he has already has arrived anywhere you and I may want to go. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Do you all understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I also like, when I'm talking, I like to talk about my family. I remember when my son was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he was a baby then. He would crawl around in the room. Crawling around. Sometimes he might crawl in another room. What I would do, I would tiptoe around him. Over and stand in front of him from his perspective. Boy, oh, how did dad get there? And then I would do it again, and he would squeal, and I would laugh. We do it all over again. I'm saying that for a reason. See, sometimes in our foolish and selfish way, right. we think we can tiptoe around God. Right. We really think we can tiptoe around his offending. He don't know what we're doing. But you realize when I tiptoe, he's still standing there. Yes. Uh -huh. I tip that away, he's there. Right. I go back here, he's there. When I wake up in the morning, he's there. When I go down to sleep, he's there. So it's no way around God. Right. So you may as well realize that you cannot escape from him. Right. He's already waiting on you. Yeah. He got his hand there holding on you, yeah. hoping that one day you will come back home to him. Right. Yeah. See, that's what we got to understand. Mm -hmm. We got to help the Father, so why not take advantage of him? All right, no. See, we don't understand what we're doing to give. Yeah. See, we're giving the most precious gift in the world. Yeah, that's right, that's right. When he made that, he brought his son and said, okay, Take the sin away from the world. Yes. But look what you and I did. Mm -hmm. We didn't take advantage of it at all. That's right. <laughs> you know, we thought it was a hard thing being a Christian. The hardest thing for me was being out there in that world. Oh, right. yeah. That's when I stayed broke all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, trying to keep up with the Jones. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was so broke, I didn't know what broke was. You know? <laughs> but once I turned my life over to God, I started getting some of the things that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Because he said if you put him first. Come on. Yeah. What did he say? I will supply what? He just said your wants. That's right. He said all you need. So we need to understand that. If we got somebody there, oh, Lord, he must supply all my needs. Why I want to go out there searching for these things that riches in gold when I already have it. That's right. That's what we got to understand. Oh, yeah. All right. You know who really All discovered right. that the hardest way though that really we need to learn to wait on God, Jonah. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. You know what Jonah did, don't you? Oh yeah. Jonah was that one that was hard headed, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Everyone knows the story of Jonah. Mm -hmm. You don't read about it. <laughs> Ain't got time to preach about it today. I don't want to keep it too long. But I can tell you a good story about Jonah. You know, but I want to keep moving on because I know some of you are came from a long way, and I appreciate that, so I'm not going to keep you too long, but I'm going to tell you what I got to say. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, now follow with me as I read verse 8. Verse 8 says, If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depth, you are there also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once again, 